who has done such a terrific job in this her eighth season. She is the reigning SEC Coach of the Year. They were preseason picked to finish seventh last year in the conference, finished third, even without Jordan Frerichs, but she's back on the court and tipping it up for the Tigers. And here we go. Missouri in their gold and black, K-State on their road purple, and K-State with the first possession of the game. Starting lineup is on the bottom of the screen for you. Ranky, a freshman. Martin, that do-everything player for the Wildcats. There she is with the basketball. And slips and travels on the first possession. Well, you saw Missouri open up in their traditional man defense. They play open stance and a uh, very good first possession for Missouri on the defensive end. You see the starters there at the bottom, Lauren Aldridge, a transfer from Kansas, who is familiar with Kansas State at point guard position. Blocked inside, but Jordan Freck, so great to see her back on the court. It is. Uh, all season long, we watched her on the bench, and she had to learn how to contribute to the team without being on the court. Her leadership skills are invaluable as a fifth-year senior. And as you mentioned, Brenda, just terrific to see one of the hardest working players in the SEC back in uniform. She, along with Sophie Cunningham, going to make such a scoring tandem this year. A foul called on Aldridge. Her first, first foul of the game, and K-State will trigger it underneath the basket. Kansas State 5-1 on the year. Their only loss is to UCLA, played out in the tournament in Las Vegas. Goff wheeling and dealing, can't get that one to go, and Frerichs with the board. Let's talk about Missouri's keys to the game, Carol. Well, for Missouri, it's very important that they take care of the basketball. K-State's defense turns you over, and also to have an inside presence. That's where Missouri has an advantage on the offensive end. They're going to have to have an inside presence against that zone of Kansas State as Sierra Porter, the 6'4", junior going from the five position last year and moving out to that stretch four, expanding her range. Well, Porter's really a true stretch. She's tall, so you, you always want to stuff them back down inside the paint, but she is a true face-up player, mm -hmm. very skilled for a big girl. Sierra Porter, who's Brothers now playing at Mizzou, although Michael Jr. with the season-ending injury, such a disappointment to all Missouri fans. Tigers here facing that zone. Not a traditional zone, right? Well, this is a box and one. Uh, we've got Ranky, the freshman, chasing Sophie Cunningham. So a little bit of a sneak attack with, from Jeff Mitty and his staff and trying to figure out how to corral Sophie Cunningham. Let's take a look at the coach's keys for Kansas State, Carol. Well, Jeff Mitty wanted transition defense to be good, and he knew for that to happen, they had to take care of the basketball as well. And Missouri is so good at getting to the free throw line, so playing space, using that zone to keep them out of foul trouble. Porter in traffic. Williams able to get the block. Peyton Williams fresh off her time with the Kansas State volleyball team. And a long three-pointer by Shaylin Martin. Just her second three-pointer of the year. Well, all the players really for K-State are capable. Mm -hmm. uh, we're early in the season, but uh, one through five, they've all got the ability to shoot the three, much like Missouri does. Offensive foul drawn by Martin. She fell out of it right in front of the K-State bench, and Porter gonna pick up her first foul for the Tigers. You gotta love Martin is a crafty player. She's she's undersized, but she knows how to dig in and make tough plays, and that's a huge play for K State. If you can make Porter sit down in the first half, it negates this home crowd. Jalen Martin, a six-foot senior out of Salina, Kansas, grew up on a farm. We had a good conversation today with Robin Pinchton about her growing up on a farm as they make the nice pass inside. Kansas State does to Peyton Williams. Robin, Robin Kingston talked to us about how that shaped her as a coach doing anything she can to be successful, her growing up on the farm. Well, I think any of your childhood experiences are going to shape your values, they're going to shape your work ethic, and certainly growing up on a farm, you got to get up and get at it early in the morning, uh, and it's a team effort, so. Martin with another three-point attempt, that one is off. 
Missouri with an early 6-5 lead over the Wildcats. And K-State's continued with the box and one. Uh, Goodrich, the freshman for K-State, now in the chase position on Sophie Cunningham. So until Missouri makes him do something different, I think we'll continue to see Jeff Mitty employ the drop defense. Well, Sierra Porter off to a great start against that diamond or box part of the zone, already with six of the eight points. Well, you get ISO down inside, and Sophie's bringing traffic with her away from the paint. That allows Porter to get in one-on-one -on -one situations and do her thing. But on that possession, Porter picks up her second foul, so she's going to have to go to the bench. Goff misses the first free throw. And in for Missouri, going to be Kayla Michael. That's the former Kayla McDowell, number 20. Got married in the offseason. Kayla Michael now. And Goff makes the second of two free throws. And you know for Porter, she was feeling so good offensively. She had six out of Missouri's eight points. And now you got to sit down with two early fouls. teams played for a lot of years against each other in the old Big 8 conference days and then the Big 12. We've actually, this is the 84th meeting between these two, but it's their first meeting since 2015. And a turnover for the Wildcats. Well, they traded turnovers on that possession. Both teams a little impatient offensively. And Amber Smith gets that one to roll around and drop in. Well, Amber Smith's a player that uh, she can knock down threes, but she's also got that nice mid-range game and just saw it in transition. Goff facing up on Aldridge. And a travel. So that brings us to the first media timeout. That's the fourth turnover for Kansas State here in the early going as the Tigers leading Jada. <laughs> so all the other college coaches can just, just stay away. bypass Columbia. <laughs> but unfortunately for Mizzou, Sierra, on the bench with the two fouls early. K-State's changed their defense a little bit. Uh, looks like they're back into their traditional 2-3 zone. Cunningham goes into Frerichs, back to Sophie Cunningham. That's the first open look that she has got, the first look, and she's short on the three-pointer. But she was wide open, so that's going to be a little concerning, I would think, to Jeff Mitty. Simone Goodrich with a wild shot off the side of the backboard. And a kick ball. It will be Missouri on the sideline. Shot clock will stay at 25. The talked about the series history between these two teams. They haven't played since 2015. They haven't played a regular season game since 2012 when Missouri was still in the Big 12 Conference. Kansas State leads the series, but Missouri leads here in Columbia. Nice move, powerful move to the rim by the sophomore Amber Smith. Well, we've seen Amber Smith pull up for a jumper in transition. Now we see her breaking down the K-State defense with dribble penetration. Missouri already up 12 to 6 here in the first quarter. And it's interesting matchup at the point position. This is where Goff has a big height advantage over Lauren Aldridge, but she's not been able to really take advantage of that. Martin made her first three-pointer, but has missed the last two. Smith pulling up from long range, showing she can do it from the mid-range and the long range as well. A timeout, Kansas State. The Mizzou Tigers on a 7-0 run, and Amber Smith has really been hitting her stride over the course of the last three rebounds in about 16 minutes of play. But with the graduations for this Missouri program, Lindsey Cunningham, Sierra McCall uh, McCallis, as well as Leanna Doty, uh, that's some big shoes to fill for this Missouri Tigers and Amber Smith ste stepping into that starting role. And you, you wondered not only physically what Missouri was losing, but the leadership, that, that experience. You know, at what point will other younger players assume the responsibilities and a wild shot by Jordan Frerichs. That makes him five of their last seven, the Tigers. Page missed the three-pointer, tries to dish off. 
everybody on the floor going for the loose ball, and it will be possession arrow, Missouri. Jordan Ferricks and Shaylin Martin, two players that that's what you expect out of them. They're, they're going to be the players that are going to dive on the floor. Well, when you talk to both coaches and you ask them to describe their teams, you, you hear the same adjectives. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, they're scrappers, they're gritty, gritty they're tough. tough. Mm -hmm. And both coaches pride themselves on having players on the floor who exemplify that with their actions. And you just saw a great scrum right there and that, that's basically what they do whatever it takes so Missouri basketball as Jordan Chavis bringing it up the court she has been shooting well from three-point range nice pass inside pursuing the ball Michael gets her own rebound into the double team throws it away Kayla got can she split the defenders and get out in front? Stripped away by Chavis. And a foul on the floor. I think Goff, I think Goff feels like she got, she got fouled, but it really looked like great hands by Chavis to knock the ball out. K-State ends up with possession. So got the triggered inbound. We mentioned that she's playing point guard. She is there for... Karyla Middlebrook, who SEC fans may recognize as a transfer from Alabama. And she had some complications from a surgery and is still looking to recover from that. They're hoping to have her back in the next couple of weeks, but she is the point guard for this Kansas State team, Middlebrook. And Goff has had to take over that position while she's been gone. And as well as Goff has played in that position, Middlebrook is a true point guard, and that really when you're in tough power five matchups, you can't have enough guard play. So a little, uh, Jeff Mitty has his hand tied a little bit because of the lack of depth at the point position. Missouri stretching out to a 15-6 lead. Kaylee Page thinks about it. Peyton Williams inside, spins. Remember, two big graduations for Kansas State from last year. Brianna Lewis, their 6'5 center, along with Kindred Wiesman. And there's a look at Middlebrook on the bench, just waiting for her time to heal from this complication from her surgery. Well, you got to take your hat off to Jeff Mitty because we call their NCAA games uh, last season. And when you say graduation losses, mm -hmm. they were huge losses. These were, uh, Wiesman's a big time scorer, point guard. And then you had Lewis, who was one of the best shot blockers in the Big 12. And then you look up, and K-State's five and one. They have competed, beaten Penn State. They've done some good things early. And then Jeff Mitty says, but that's just graduation losses, he said. Mm -hmm. Williams has been playing volleyball. He's had a lot of different uh, issues for Jeff Mitty to navigate this team through. It's on the offensive foul on two on. Emmanuel Tuon, the 6'1 freshman out of France. For less than a minute here in the first quarter, a 13-1 run for Missouri. K-State's just looking for some type of opening, and Missouri defensively has just been tough. Nice one-on-one -on -one down inside, but the big freshman, Blake, wasn't able to finish it. Nice post up by Frerich, splits the defenders, can't get that one to connect, but what a strong post up and a presence that she is. And late, the freshman center for K-State, she's got a presence too, I mean, she, had effect on Freerix. It's going to be fun to watch her develop. Jeff Mitty said she might foul me going to the score table. She's getting a lot of fouls, but that's a hard position to play as a freshman. Goff hits the bucket for K-State, and short on the three-quarter court heave is Chavis. So a good K-State lack of offense. And they've turned K-State over six times already, so that's 
And it's really scouting report specific. I mean, that's what Robin Pinchton has been known for. I talked to Evan Unrau, who is a star for Missouri, and she saw Missouri play at Cal. The Tigers just coming off a big victory over another ranked opponent on the road in Cal. And that was one of the things as a former Tiger she loves seeing is how well they scouted Cal and how they took away their strengths. And, and that's really what Robin Pinchin likes to do. Well, you got to credit the coaching staff, one was having good scouts, but you also have to credit the players with staying disciplined in their scout assignments. And Robin Pinchin says, we're not good enough just to line up and guard you. We need some advantages. So we spend a lot of time with the scouts. Amber Smith already now in double figures with that three-pointer. She hasn't missed a shot four for four from the field and has made a couple of three-pointers. And that's impressive. Missouri has not really been relying on the three ball early in the season, but you love to see them knock them down because when they start shooting well from behind the arc, offensively, they're a beautiful team to watch. Off, looking for a crease, gets around the corner, and right as the shot clock was winding down, scores the bucket at the rim. And that was a nice job. You won't go off to have the ball against Lauren Aldridge just because of the height and physicality. So good job by Jeff Mitty and his staff coming out of that quarter break. Back to the diamond and one, it looks like, as Ranky is following Sophie Cunningham. Well, when you're guarding Missouri, you've got to come up with different ways, they're, they're so good offensively. They shoot the ball well, they do have inside out presence, and they have Sophie Cunningham. Well, well, that one gets away, it did not hit the rim, the shot clock did not reset, or did it, the officials are gonna get together. There's Brian Interline, along with Brian Garland and Meadow Overstreet, our officials today. They're gonna take a look and see if it did in fact hit the rim, if, if the shot clock should have reset. Okay, so the officials came over and the ball didn't hit the rim on the first shot, but on the second attempt, it did catch the rim, so they needed to reset the shot clock, so Mizzou will get the ball back under their own basket with a fresh shot clock, so a break for Missouri. And that's why I'm not an official, <laughs> Brenda. I've been trying to officiate since I was coaching, and I've not been able to do it very well since. Tough job. Nice Tough job. job. That's a great offensive execution by Missouri to set a little in screen and have the shooter slip behind. Well, Lauren Aldridge led Kansas in scoring and assists her sophomore year before she transferred to Missouri back to her home state. Kaylee Page with the first or the second three-pointer of the game for Kansas State, and they needed that. They did. Kaylee Page came over from Nebraska. She's very good at finding her way behind the arc and nailing the three-point shots. Well, for Missouri, before Lauren Aldridge hit that three, or including that, Smith and Porter are seven of eight from the field, but the rest of the team just three, four, 11. Really, both teams need to be able to knock down threes. Great job by Sophie Cunningham to screen it for Lauren Aldridge. And then you come on the other end, and Kayla Page right behind that three-point arc, ready to catch and fire. And she hasn't been shooting very well, Kaylee Page. Five of her last 26 from beyond the arc, so that's a, a good sign for the Wildcats. Sophie Cunningham picked up her first foul on that last play. Here comes Page around the screen, off the mark. Peyton Williams, and there's Frerichs with the rebound. And that bunny about Williams, that's a shot she's gonna make. She has not practiced basketball very much since coming over from volleyball season. Jordan Chavis with the three. That's her 11th on the season. And Chavis is a player, that's her role. Come in, knock down shots. That one is stripped from Goff. Already seven turnovers for Kansas State. That's typically something they do with their length defensively has caused turnovers, but they've only forced four turnovers for Missouri so far today. 
Chavis with that three-pointer earlier. The, and this is what Chavis does. She is a three-point shooter. She's made 13 field goals this season. Mm -hmm. Ten of them have been threes. That was her 11th. So terrific job in knowing your role and being able to, to deliver. Yeah, she made 28 three-pointers her freshman year and has already made 11 this season. And with the graduation of both Lindsey Cunningham and Sierra Michaelis, they're, they're are, they lost a lot of three-point shooting. They need someone to step in and fill that role. Martin sizing up, trying to go by Frericks. Great footwork. The shot wouldn't go, but terrific job on Martin with a pivot foot. A foul, and count the basket for Jordan Chavis. And give credit to Sophie Cunningham. That's a second screen that Sophie Cunningham has set that's allowed her teammate to get wide open three-point shots. So the foul was committed with the player trying to get through the screen. And Chavis with the three-pointer from the corner. That's just terrific team offense by Missouri. And willing screener in Sophie Cunningham. So Martin commits the foul. So an opportunity here for possibly a five or six point possession as they count the three and with the foul, Mizzou gets another possession. That's just the first foul of the quarter. It's been a pretty cleanly played game from a fouling perspective, although Sierra Porter went out early with those two fouls for Missouri. You've got to remember one of Jeff Mitty's keys is to keep Missouri off the foul line. And Missouri's been able to draw fouls in different ways. They've not really been to the foul line that much. And the shoots throws it away. A two-on-one opportunity. Ranky scores it. And K-State, this is really how K-State wants to play. They're really good at getting in the passing lanes, using their length in this 1-1-3-2-3 hybrid zone defense and getting deflections, making passing lanes look open, and then using their length to close them up. Sophie Cunningham short. Cunningham still has not scored, and that's just her second shot attempt. And we've seen a little diamond and one on her from time to time throughout the game. And it's important for Missouri to know they can play with Sophie not scoring. There are other things you can do if you're Sophie, and we've seen her do that by setting screens, continuing to move the ball. Tigers moving around the perimeter. Inside the shoots. She's trying to find someone to pass it to. Chavis with it as the shot clock winds down and does not draw the iron this time. 4.03 to go in the second quarter. Missouri with the 14 point lead. It's the week here on. I love that. You love these big Power Five games in November, early December. It gives coaches and teams an opportunity to kind of measure up and see what the path toward the big dance might look like. Uh, in this case, this game, you got two teams coming off NC tournament uh, experiences last season mm -hmm. with aspirations of dancing again this season. Ashley Ray draws the block from Jordan Frerichs. Ashley Ray, the 6'4 freshman out of Girard, Kansas. Kansas State finished fourth in the Big 12 last year. Missouri finished third, and as we mentioned, both advanced to the second round of the NCAA tournament. What do you think? Well, uh, a lot of contact, but you know, the foot's inside the arc. I'm not sure if that comes into play, but uh, you know. Ray showing this bruiser power down in the freshman. box. That's yeah. what it's supposed to look like. Good, good physical post play. She was the Kansas 4A Division II Player of the Year in high school was Ashley Ray. Connects on the second, draws Kansas State within 12. And Ray and Lakes are two freshman post players for K-State that will continue to get better as they get more time. 
and a three-pointer by Lauren Aldridge. And another foul away from the ball. And again, inside-out passing. You love that tight play. Couldn't see the offside action. But Robin Pinchton was really hoping Lauren Aldridge would really break out. She's been so concerned about running the club. Aldridge, you're a new player coming in. You want to take over. You want to make sure you got the offenses running, that she's not really looked for her shot. But, boy, in this game, she's shown that she's still got it. The foul was on Kaylee Page away from the shot. So another extra possession there for Missouri. Yeah, kind of an interesting scenario for Lauren Aldridge, you know, former rival of Kansas State when she played her first two years at Kansas, but she transferred, sat out last year, and now she's in law school already at Mizzou is Lauren Aldridge. And she is taking over that point guard position vacated by Lindsey Cunningham. Well, Lauren Aldridge, if there's if a case needs to be pleaded to the official, Sin <laughs> Lauren. She's got some in-class experience. Nice pass inside to Jordan Frerichs. And K-State going to have to call to know with wins over two ranked teams. And the player of the week, women's basketball, Asia Wilson. And what a player she is. <laughs> Asia Wilson's had two 30-point performances already in this young season. Showing why she's the SEC Player of the Year, All-American, and defending national champion. Well, and so much going to be on her shoulder after graduating three players that go on to be drafted in the first round of the WNBA. So much, I mean, it's not like it hasn't been expected of her throughout her career, but so much will be on her shoulders this year. Well, it, it, it will be, but she's capable. She's got broad shoulders, she's got great talent, and she's got a, the great capacity to continue to evolve her game. So Jordan Ferrick's gonna take a break. Remember, she was out all last season with the ACL injury. It was such a blow to this team as her junior year, she'd been, junior and sophomore year, she had been second team all SEC. Even led the conference in rebounds her sophomore year. Cunningham has a block, still hasn't scored yet, but keeps it alive and out to Lauren Aldridge, her third three-pointer of the game. And Robin Pinchon's gotta love this. But she has been waiting for Aldridge to have that breakout offensive game. Maybe it just took an OK State rival game to get it going. <laughs> Kaylee Page, can she answer back? No short. Peyton Williams going to work against the double team and scores in the paint on the extra effort. And you feel like both these teams, because they've had so many moving parts and adjustments and roles, injuries, that both teams are going to really get better and better as the season goes. Kayla Michael with the the make off the nice pass from Amber Smith. We've seen Smith now with the 10 points contributing with the mid-range game, the three-pointer now back-to-back -back assist for Smith. Well, and the Missouri Post players have done such a good job of doing their work early. They're deep in the paint. Real estate is everything to Post players. Beautiful pass to Smith. Can't get it to go, but tips her own shot. Well, she needs to get that rebound, average out. Great job <laughs> to stay with it, stay active, keep your feet happy. Terrific job by Amber Smith. Missouri outscoring Kansas State on second chance points, seven to two, but Goff quiets the crowd momentarily with the three-pointer, and here we've got less than a minute to go in the second quarter. What a good half for Missouri, considering the fact that Sierra Porter scored eight points early and then went out with the two fouls, and Sophie Cunningham hasn't even scored yet, and they are still up 41 to 22. Here with just 28 seconds to go in the second quarter. And a travel for Kansas State. So Missouri going to get one last possession. K-State very hesitant offensively. And part of that's Missouri. And part of that's just trying to get the cobwebs off of this young season. So the Tigers, who are still shooting 50% from the field, get one last possession. Cunningham steps out of bounds, so they won't get the last possession, and it'll be an opportunity for K-State with 2.4 seconds. 
on the clock. Kaylee Page with the long baseball throw. Cunningham intercepts and is not able to connect at the end of the second quarter. Amber Smith leading the Tigers with 12 points. Five screener for all the easy shots that were made. You'll see her right here stepping in, taking out two K-State defenders. Here, another real solid screen was turned into a second opportunity for Missouri. So great job by Sophie to play well without scoring. Goff leading all scores for Kansas State with the eight points, even though Cunningham did not score. And she didn't have a game all year long where she didn't score. But even though she hasn't scored contributing in other ways, for the Tigers. Sierra Porter is back on the court for the Tigers. She only played four minutes in the first half. She scored eight points, or excuse me, six points in that time, but got the two fouls. And there she is again, the nice high-low pass from Frerichs to set her up. And she's a matchup problem for K-State. She's long, she's big. Uh, K-State really doesn't have a player that's as tall as Porter. The key for Porter is to be better on the defensive end and stay in the ball game. Williams going to work on Porter, takes it right at her up and over the volleyball player with a nice high release on that shot inside. I'm just impressed with Williams, her ability to go from volleyball to basketball. Mm -hmm. Her skill set looks very good. I know she's going to get better as, as she gets more practice and play, but uh, she's got a real ability on the, on the basketball side of her. K-State athletic career. Sierra Porter already inserting her influence. Four points here in the early going in the third quarter. And I love how deep Porter's getting on offense. I mean, you, you ask for post players to get deep, do your work early, and Porter's doing that. She's already five of six from the field in double digits, even though it's been limited minutes. Martin knocks it away from Aldridge, tries a three-pointer. Kansas State was just three of 10 from three-point range in the first half of play compared to the seven of 13 for the Tigers. K-State's a team, they need to knock down eight, nine threes to really play against a team like Missouri, a ranked team. Amber Smith, who had a terrific first half, makes a nice bounce pass inside and then Martin commits the foul on the pass to Frerichs. Brenda, we've seen several times on the offensive end where the posts have been so good, their interior passing has led to some positives for Missouri. And when Robin Pinchton was asked about the identity of this team earlier this week in a press conference, besides the grittiness and toughness as Amber Smith banks it off the window, she said, we want to be an inside out team. And yes, we've done that in the past. We've had a lot of three-point shooters around, but this year we really think we have the advantage there and want to build inside out. Goff with a nice little jumper in the lane for the Wildcats. Well, I think your better teams are going to play offense from the inside out. It does open up three-point shooting. It also opens up, if you knock down threes, then your drive lanes are gonna open up. So everything good happens when you can go inside, even if you don't keep it there, mm -hmm. get it in there, make the defense react to you, and then you get open looks in multiple places. Okay, State going inside to Williams. Good defense by Frerichs. That's good team defense by the post players from Missouri. Frerichs does the early work. Porter cleans it up. Another nice pass inside. Roy Amber Smith showing her array of skills setting up that shot inside. Well, she's just been so good. We noted her ability to score the basketball, but her passing, so impressive, mm -hmm. Brenda. She's mm -hmm. willing to pass, she's looking to pass, and she's good at delivering. Three assists already for Smith as Goff goes to work on Aldridge using that size advantage. Well, that's the matchup I thought we'd see more of it. She's tried, she hadn't always hit the shot, but that was a terrific job to take your height and go down inside on Aldridge. Bounce pass back door to Sophie Cunningham. Still hasn't scored, but she kicks it out. See her Porter keeps it alive. How about that? Porter keeping it high, and now she's seven of eight from the field in just six minutes of play. <laughs> 
That's efficiency. Uh, yeah. Offensively, she's been ready to roll. It was the defense that set her down on the bench with two early fouls, but she has been really good. The foul on Aldridge will send Goff to the line. Porter now with 14 points, excuse me, in her six minutes of play. I mean, really, with K-State, you got to pick your poison. you got Amber Smith going off. You've had Lauren Aldridge going off. Now Porter's in the game, and she's doing her thing, both offensive rebounding and just playing good position offense. Kayla Goff, this is her seventh game of the year in double figures. All, so they played seven. They, she's been in double figures seven games. I mentioned earlier in the game, she's had to take on that point guard responsibility, not something she's had to do in her career because Karyla Middlebrook is still recovering from some complications from a surgery that she had. They're hoping to have her back in a couple of weeks, but it's meant that Goff has had to have her the ball in her hands a lot as they wait for Middlebrook to come back. Well, she's been super. It's a little tough task uh, to come into Mizzou Arena and play this very talented Missouri team, but Goff has stepped up and played her role pretty well to this point. Just the eighth turnover of the game for the Tigers. Kansas State typically forces, what, about 17 turnovers per game? Yeah, it's, it's right at almost 18. They, they rely on turnovers to ignite about, uh, I think about 20-something percent of their offense comes that way. So Missouri's turnovers have not really led to transition offense for K-State. That one gets away, so a turnover. We'll see if this turns into points for the Wildcats. Missouri's really been dominating in about every phase of the game. They are out-rebounding the Wildcats 30-17 to 17 at this point. Page can't get it to go. Mary Lakes, another one of those big freshman post players that Kansas State has, gets the rebound. Goodrich, a little off-balance, takes some contact and puts it off the window. And that's another freshman for K-State. So as they mature and continue to get practice and continue to build their chemistry. Jeff Mitty's got to be excited about the youth. And of course, it's always about development and maturity with young players. Nice pass inside, gets knocked away, gets the ball back. Good extra effort by Kayla Michael. It's just relentless pursuit. And we've seen that time and again out of Missouri going to the offensive boards, missing one shot, but staying relentless in their pursuit. Knocked out of bounds by Missouri. Kansas State will have the ball when we come back. 18 seconds on the shot has been really impressive tonight. It's the post-to-post -post passing, the post players doing their work early. Uh, it, they've just been really solid, especially in the post positions. They've also shot the ball well, but when your posts are playing well and the paint is occupied, the outside shooting will come. That's Carol Ross. I'm Brenda Van Lingen. Thanks for joining us here in Columbia, Missouri. The Tigers leading 53 to 32 here in the third quarter. Kansas State trying to muscle up inside. Ashley Ray picks up the offensive foul. And there's Porter again making her presence felt defensively. Great position, takes the charge. Gets another possession for the Missouri offense. Talked about Sierra Porter being efficient. Well, the Missouri offense, six of nine from the field here in the second half. Now make that seven for 10 with the driving basket by Jordan Frerichs. And Missouri has certainly found a soft spot in that K-State defense. They're going right inside and the Missouri, Missouri post players and Porter and Frerichs have just been phenomenal. That time Porter blocks the shot. It'll be 12 seconds on the shot clock for K-State underneath. Let's look back at that Frerichs basket. Again, doing her work early, getting down, isolating the K-State zone, going one-on-one -on -one inside. So good to see Jordan Frerichs back on the court. What a career she's had here at Missouri, and so disappointing when she went down with that ACL injury last year, but used the time in the off year as she was rehabbing to learn and grow as a player. She told us last year when we talked to her how much she was learning watching the game from the sideline. Well, it's a whole different perspective because now you're sitting where coaches sit and you see the game, you're not caught up in the middle of it and you're able to grow as a player because you do get the coach's perspective.
you have to also find a new way to contribute because you can't physically help. So she said she grew as a leader. She had to learn to be verbal and vocal, which is not her normal personality. So Lauren Aldridge had to go out of the game with three fouls. Now Chavis picks up a foul. So back-to-back -back fouls here for Missouri as a fresh shot clock for Kansas State. Missouri has tied for their biggest lead of the game right now. And this is where if you're Missouri, you've got a commanding lead. Things have gone your way. You've shot the ball well. Do you have the maturity yet to put your foot down and really stay focused and in the moment and not get sloppy? Mm -hmm. Got a couple of turnovers, a couple of fouls. Martin kicks out to Goff in the corner. And Sophie Cunningham coming down the court. Cunningham still has not scored. It's been 65 games since Cunningham went without scoring. It was her freshman year in November, the last time she didn't score. As Kansas State comes back, Simone Goodrich with the layup. Nice job, K-State, to keep their eyes up, keep, stay ready in those passing lanes, get some easy offense, because nothing's been easy against the Missouri defense. So eliminate the defense by fast break basketball. Chavis with the bounce pass inside. Frericks kicks it out. Good recovery by the K-State beat. Another turnover. Missouri's not as sharp. Forced that one inside. Not a good passing catch. 11 turnovers now for the Tigers. Can Kansas State find a way to chip away at this lead a little bit? Amber Smith ties up Williams inside, and it'll be possession arrow Tigers as the Missouri fans in attendance. Pretty happy about that effort. Well, Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll have Thinking Out Loud presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk about the SEC championship game and want your participation via social media and live call-ins throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, Missouri triggers it in to Jordan Chavis. Missouri led by Porter with 14 and also Amber Smith with 14. Kansas State just has one player in double figures. That's Kayla Goff. Chavis long. They've had some empty possessions for Missouri, but Kansas State really hasn't been able to chip away, although we've seen some nice plays from the freshmen there. Goodrich uses the backboard and then away from the basket we're going to get a foul on Missouri we saw a couple of instances like this in the first half for Missouri they scored in Kansas State foul but this time Kansas State gets the extra possession yeah, I don't think I've seen a game where there's been as many double possessions as we've had in this one but a lot of off ball activity and the referees are there to catch it so that's the second foul on Jordan Frerich she'll go to the bench Lauren Aldridge comes back in. So you've got both Chavis and Aldridge and Smith at the guard spots. And that's knocked out of bounds by Missouri. They're joined by Sophie Cunningham and Sierra Porter in the Missouri lineup. Kansas State has a couple of freshmen in in Ranky and Goodrich to go along with Paige, Williams, and Goff. With a minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. Ranky trying to find a way to the open spot, but Sophie Cunningham being very physical with her defensively. It was a little mix-up in offense, but uh, nice job for K-State to stay patient, get organized, get your offense set. Now eight points for Peyton Williams. And it's 55-38 here with less than a minute to go in the third quarter. When Lauren Aldridge went out of the game the last couple of minutes with those three fouls, Missouri did not score. They don't score there, but a foul going to be called on Rachel Rankey, the freshman from Burnsville, Minnesota. She's been held to just two points, and she's been scoring well lately for K-State. Well, she's a really good three-point shooter, but a more off-ball activity, weak side rebounding. Cunningham still hasn't scored. She's 0 for 4 now. And a quick move to the basket. And a nice tip in that time by Kaylee Page, a 6'3 senior, using her length inside. And all of a sudden, we've got a 15-point ball game. K-State's done a nice job of just 
hanging around, got a little momentum off some Missouri turnovers. K-State bringing the trap on point guard. Nice change of pace for Jeff Mitty's squad. And another turnover. Here comes Kayla Goff pushing ahead to Goodrich. Goodrich scores. She's got six points here in the third quarter. And a K-State run of 10 to nothing here in the third, making things interesting. Missouri had led by a zero points since November 27th. 2015 in her freshman year, so over two years ago since she had a game where she didn't score. And I have to believe that she's going to score because her team is struggling. The third quarter was yeah. not kind to Missouri. K-State did a great job turning them over, and you're going to expect that Sophie now is going to have to find a way to help other than setting screens and doing the little things. So Rachel Ranke makes this an 11-point game. Missouri red, led by as many as 23 points in the third quarter. And a block by Williams. The extra effort from Frericks, and Missouri needed that one. I mean, Frericks, she is a beast on weak side. She's so strong. She gets low. She's ready. She's a great second possession player. A little extra pep in the step for Kansas State. Goodrich has really been a lift for them. She had scores in transition. Now she hits her first three-pointer of the game. Well, K-State's got some confidence. You know, their defense has created offense. They turned Missouri over in the third quarter. Started knocking down some easier shots. All of a sudden, your psyche, your confidence level goes up, and now you got a ball game. All 11 points for Goodrich in the third or in the second half. As this is the closest K-State has been since halftime. Nice pass by Goff and boy, a little pick and roll action and things are going K-State's way. We saw Missouri unconscious at times in the first half. Now we're seeing K-State really feel good on the offense again. This is a Kansas State team that only lost by 10 to UCLA, the fifth-ranked team in the country, and regarded as many with it as potentially the best team in the Pac-12, the tough Pac-12 this year. I'd like to see if Missouri can get Sophie Cunningham a good look. Can they run a play that's going to get her an opportunity because she's your she's your superstar. She's the one that needs to get a touch now. And they, they didn't that time with Amber Smith getting her shot blocked at the shot clock buzzer. Paige puts it on the floor, tries to get around Smith. Puts it out to Ranky. Short and Sophie Cunningham with a big rebound. A nice job by Missouri. Just stay patient, stay low in their defense. And a timeout called by Robin Pinchton as she has seen this. I want to see Sophie Cunningham get a shot. She screened for everybody in the first mm -hmm. half. I want to see a lot of screening for her right now. And she is on the offside away from the basketball calling for it. Good defense by Kansas State. She's double teamed. Amber Smith from the deep corner. Big shot for Missouri out of the timeout by Robin Pinchton. Amber Smith says, don't worry about it, Coach. I got this. She has been stellar in this ball game. And that was a pressure shot. That was a big shot. 17 points now for the sophomore. 7 of 13 from the field. 3 of 6 from beyond the arc. You know, in the open, I said big shot Sophie. I should have said big shot Smith. <laughs> she has been... She has been really good. She's had him today. Williams with a nice up and under. She draws the foul on Sierra Porter. It was the ball movement that set up that three-pointer. Well, ball movement's been a big part of Robin Pinchon's offense. Terrific job swinging it. But that was a pressure shot. Everything was going K-State's way. You come out of a timeout. You're feeling a little heat over there in that mm -hmm. huddle. That's a big-time shot. Third foul on Porter sends Williams to the line. 
Peyton Williams had only missed one free throw all year coming into the game. She was 11 of 12 from the charity stripe. There she hits the second. And now she's got 11 for the Wildcats. Back to a 10-point lead for Missouri. Lauren Aldridge checks over, gets the play from Robin Pinchton. Missouri's got to continue to move the ball, holding it a little bit more than... And travel going to be called on Frerichs. Yeah, they, they seem hesitant. They're catch and hold. You really want to swing the ball the first time to get the K-State defense to find some holes in it. So you, you want the defense to swing, and it's not going to swing if you don't move the ball. They're going to try to post up Goff with that size advantage on Aldridge. Here she goes to work. Nice pass, boy. That was a slick pass to set up Paige for that bucket. And that's how Paige it can be effective in the paint. She's not a paint player, but if you get her on the move, then she doesn't have to get in there and be too physical. Porter knocks it down. Missouri continues to pound. They're looking for that soft spot, and like, it's been in that mid-post area. When they haven't turned the ball over, that's been their attack spot. Goff posting up Aldridge again. Kicks out. Goodrich has had the hot hand here for K-State. Big rebound for Williams. And just throwing a circus shot. <laughs> Almost went in. Well, that, that's just being a freshman. You get caught up in the moment. She's had a lot of good moments in this ball game. But that's a possession you really yeah. want to get back at your K-State. Tries to strip it away. Goodrich has 11 points all here in the second half. And Cunningham takes the ball to the rim, and she'll be at the free throw line to try to score her first points in the game when we come back. Missouri hanging on to a 10-point lead from the court. Hasn't had a game where she scored zero points since over two years ago in her freshman year. But with a chance to go to the free throw line now, doesn't take care of it just yet. Sophie is an 83% foul shooter. I still am convinced she's going to score here. There she goes. You had faith. Hey. Can't keep a good shooter down. No, no. <laughs> no. And she, she knows exactly how many points she has right now. But this, the score on the scoreboard, most important for Missouri right now as they stretch the lead back to 11. A strong second half effort here by Kansas State to overcome such a big deficit. Ranky, the freshman, a couple of freshmen have played really strong here, and Jeff Mitty has to be pleased about that on the road. Well, Ranky, that was an impressive step through move. We talk about her being a great three-point shooter, but that was some nifty footwork. Cunningham driving the baseline. Frerichs posting up inside. And a foul going to be called on Shaylin Martin, her third. And that's not a good possession for Kansas State because Missouri used most of the shot clock that time, and now with the foul gives them a fresh shot clock, and time is on the side of the Tigers. Well, K-State, they're implementing more trapping as the game, as a, the clock becomes a factor. Mm -hmm. And when you trap, you're really looking for that quick steal. You, you want to end the possession quickly, Use the clock to your advantage, but uh, Missouri's done a nice job of moving the ball. It's not allowed K-State to really reap any benefits. Brian Interline going over to the scorer's table to check on the clock. There was a kick ball. Less than four minutes to go here in the game. Missouri with the 11-point lead in this SEC Big 12 challenge. Frerichs keeps it away from a couple of defenders in the paint and scores with the left hand. Well, Frerichs is textbook post play. How to position, how to get your early real estate down inside. 
Ferricks now with double digits for the Tigers. Goff off the mark. Williams battling against a couple of Tigers, and that's going to be the fourth foul on Porter, I believe. Yes, that's it's the fourth on Sierra Porter, so K-State will trigger it inbounds. Down by 11. And that was a nice job by K-State, just to keep the possession alive. Williams battled. She gets another opportunity. Can't get it to go. Missouri has three players in double figures. Amber Smith leads away with 17. Sierra Porter with 16 on eight of nine shooting. And Frerichs just went into double figures with her last basket. Cunningham, only points of the game is that one free throw. And Kansas State steps on the baseline. And Sophie got a good look at it. She's had a couple of good looks. She hadn't had but four shot attempts from the field, but she's, it's, uh, it's a nice job, just a scrum down inside, bodies flying everywhere, but uh, we'll see what K-State's gonna do with the clock. Are they gonna allow Missouri to continue to move the ball around, or are they gonna try to extend the game? Inside out to set up Amber Smith. 20 points now for the sophomore who's just averaging seven points per game, but she's been hitting her stride the last three games for the Tigers. And a timeout for Jeff Mitty. And that was beautiful basketball by Miss Amber Smith with her career high. The 5'11 sophomore out of Shreveport, Louisiana. She had had a career high 17 against Missouri State just a couple of games ago on six of 10 from the field. Amber Smith, the SEC co-freshman of the year last year, and she is certainly growing her game. Martin for three. And pulling it away from two Tigers. Wow. Williams goes up in traffic and scores. And that was impressive. That was physical, aggressive rebounding by Williams. 12-point lead still as we now are under two minutes and a foul going to be called on Williams. Williams has 13 points with that basket on the other end. K-State's led by Goss with 14. Goodrich, the freshman, 11 points all in the second half for Kansas State. But Carol, the, the Tigers have shot well all game. They're still shooting 52% overall and 62% from three-point range. Well, the, the problem was never shooting the ball. It was the turnovers that made the offense struggle a little bit in that third quarter. But uh, just a nice team effort, really, by Missouri and how the ball was, has been moving. The different players have been able to get good touches. Frerichs with frustration there. Missed a couple of point-blank shots and then picks up her second foul. And the crowd coming to its feet. They want to see some defensive stops here down the stretch for the Tigers. The only other game Missouri has played at home this year was against Wright State. And they won that game 82 to 80. Jeff Mitt could not get any ball movement. We'll see what Jeff Mitty can get out of this timeout. 133 to go in the game. Both teams have three team fouls. I'm trying to post golf up. She wasn't able to get down inside, but nice screen on the back side. That was a well executed play. Williams just off the mark, but they're going to call an offensive foul away from the ball on K State. There's been a lot of off-ball action. There's been a lot of fouls and scrums on the weak side. Shaylin Martin picked up her fourth foul on that one. Sophie Cunningham says, back up, I got this. Cunningham threw a couple of defenders, dishes off. The clock is on the side of the Tigers. We've talked about Sophie Nutt scoring until she hit a foul shot, but she's been willing to do the other things. That's what's so impressive. She's been willing to make passes. Amber Smith has been on fire really since the game started, and she continues to be 
exceptional. Goff answers back after the Smith three-pointer on the other end, but just 47 seconds left now. Yeah, a lot of a lot of star players that aren't getting touches or not getting shot attempts mm -hmm. get frustrated. Mm -hmm. They force things. Sophie's been very uh, good. And staying patient. Staying patient. Mm -hmm. Aldridge keeps her dribble, drives between a couple of K-State defenders, and finishes it off for the Tigers, 73-59. And even though Kansas State came back within eight after being down by 23, Missouri hanging on for the victory in this installment of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. The victory will give Missouri their 34th straight home 